Mace Windu and Palpatine's duel in Revenge of the Sith is one of the best in the entire Star Wars saga and also happens to be arguably the most controversial among fans. The age-old debate being as to whether or not Palpatine threw the fight on purpose. George Lucas confirmed that Mace Windu won fair and square, however we know his history of changing his ideas when it comes to scenes, whereas Ian McDermott says Palps threw it. We are certainly inclined to side with the creator, but that's not what today's video is about. How did Mace really win? What advantages did his unique lightsaber combat style and force ability grant him? Let's dive into it. Let's start with Vapod, or Vapad, whichever I say doesn't matter, someone will still tell me I'm wrong in the comments. In case you weren't aware, there are seven unique forms of lightsaber combat which duelists use. For instance, Obi-Wan Kenobi uses Form 3, Sirisu. We have a definitive guide to the seven classic forms of lightsaber combat video on our channel. Definitely check it out after this one. For the purposes of Mace Windu and this video, we need only focus on Form 7, known as Juyo, or the Ferocity Form. Juyo was described as the most vicious form of lightsaber combat and was said to involve a significant internal focus on the part of its user. Due to its relatively high focus on one's internal emotions to gain dominance in combat, Form 7 went from simply being looked down upon to outright being seen as a taboo. Juyo's use was controversial among the Jedi Order, as many felt that the ferocity form violated the part of the Jedi Code which states, quote, there is no emotion, there is peace, due to its requirement to fight under the guidance of controlled passion. Knowledge of Form 7 eventually became restricted among the Jedi Order, whose members were worried that its precepts would lead practitioners towards the dark side of the Force. In contrast, members of the Sith, such as Darth Maul, employed Juyo without reservation. Darth Sidious went as far as to label Form 7 as a Sith style. However, one Jedi who used Form 7 was, of course, Mace Windu. He did not employ the use of Juyo, but rather developed his own variation of Form 7, called Vapod. This fighting style channeled the form's dark side tendencies rather than outright embracing them. Vapod essentially allowed a user to redirect an opponent's dark side power back onto them. As a result, the stronger a Vapod's user's opponent is in the dark side, the stronger they in turn become. Windu created Vapod with aid from Sora Bullock, who fell to the dark side due to the form's temptations. Thus, Windu seldom taught it to other Jedi. He and his former apprentice, Depa Balaba, who sparingly used Form 7, were considered Vapod's only true masters. Windu described Vapod himself as, quote, Vapod is as aggressive and powerful as its namesake, but its power comes at great risk. Immersion in Vapod opens the gates that restrain one's inner darkness. To use Vapod, a Jedi must allow himself to enjoy the fight. He must give himself over to the thrill of battle, the rush of winning. Vapod is a path that leads through the penumbra of the dark side. This was Vapod's ultimate test. So, considering the fact that Mace Windu created both a lightsaber combat form and a mental discipline that brings him so close to the dark side, while avoiding being corrupted by it proves that he is truly one of the strongest Jedi of his time. Now what if I told you Vapod wasn't Mace's only rare ability? Mace Windu also happened to be the master of a rare force ability known as Shatterpoint. Shatterpoint allowed a user to see the weak points or shatter points in people, objects, and even events almost as if they were a spider's web or cracks in a glass window. Shortly before the first battle of Geonosis, Mace Windu perceived Count Dooku to be a Shatterpoint, capable of ending the Clone Wars before they even began. His attachments let his old friend live, however, and so Dooku was able to go on and initiate the conflict. In only a short span of time, the Shatterpoint that made Dooku the heart of the war disappeared. Eventually, Mace Windu realized a number of Shatterpoints connected with Anakin Skywalker, prior to his fall as Darth Sidious continued to groom and test his future apprentice. However, Mace wasn't the only Force user able to sense shatter points. He was just very skilled with this Force ability. For instance, his opponent in the duel we're focusing this video on, Palpatine, used shatter points much later on the Star Wars timeline in Return of the Jedi. The Sith Lord was able to sense a shatter point aboard the shuttle Tiderium as it landed on the forest moon of Endor. Sidious sensed someone on board that would have a great role in the course of fate, that of course being Luke Skywalker. So, 
Now that we've filled you in on both of Mace Windu's X-Factor abilities in his lightsaber fighting style of the pod and force ability known as Shatterpoint, let's dissect his duel with Palpatine in Revenge of the Sith. After Anakin Skywalker revealed to Supreme Chancellor Palpatine that his master Obi-Wan Kenobi had engaged General Grievous on Utapau, the latter revealed his true identity as the Sith Lord Darth Sidious. You're the Sith Lord. Despite his inner conflict as to turning Palpatine in, killing him on the spot, or sparing him in the hopes of learning how to save his wife Padme from dying, Skywalker opted to turn Palpatine in. He raced to the Jedi Temple and found Mace Windu, a Jedi he wasn't particularly fond of, if only Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda were both not off-world. Sensing his inner turmoil, Windu sent Skywalker to wait within the council chambers and assembled the three best Jedi Masters available, the Nautilin Kit Fisto, the Zabrak Aegon Kolar, and the Iktachi Sacy Tin to arrest Palpatine in his own office. Sidious had anticipated a showdown and was well prepared for it. He sensed both the conflict of Skywalker in the council chamber, as well as the approach of the Jedi Masters aboard a gunship. Sidious recovered his lightsaber from its resting place within a sculpture, hiding the hilt in the sleeve of his robe. The Sith Lord even triggered a concealed audio recording device, meaning even if he was captured, he'd be able to make it look as though the Jedi had committed treason. The four Jedi Masters burst into Palpatine's office, and we all know how things went from there. It's treason, then. Sidious activated his lightsaber and lunged at the group, screaming. In a moment of distraction, Aegon Kolar was impaled by Palpatine through the abdomen. Sacy Tin, despite his surprise, attempted to strike the Dark Lord from behind as Kolar fell, but was cut down as Sidious swung around to slash him across the torso. In the film, it seems as though Palpatine doesn't kill them terribly quickly, but as described in the novelization of Revenge of the Sith, Palpatine was like a blur of motion and ferocity on top of the fact that the Jedi's minds were clouded by the dark side at the moment of his attack. The Dark Lord of the Sith moved so quickly that the Jedi didn't even have a moment to process or react before they met their demise. With two of the four Jedi Masters dead, Sidious immediately engaged Fisto and Windu. Fisto managed to fend off Sidious's initial strikes due to his mastery of a more defensive style of lightsaber combat, that being Form 1, but he was cut down mere seconds after the fall of his two compatriots. With his entire strike force dead, Windu was left to contend with the might of the Dark Lord alone. Sidious drove Windu back along the corridor to his public office, where Windu rallied and pulled Sidious into a blade lock. Sensing Sidious's incredible power, Windu realized that he had to give himself completely over to Vapod in order to survive this encounter. As Anakin drew closer and closer, Sidious unleashed a rapid series of unsuccessful attacks against Mesa Windu and was driven back into the ceremonial office by the Jedi Master's steady offensive march. For Windu, having given himself completely over to Vapod, was able to draw on the torrents of dark side energy emanating from his furious opponent like a heat sink. Using Sidious's own power against him, Windu proved able to match the Dark Lord blow for blow, but realized that even his mastery of a pod would result only in an indefinite stalemate. This battle could have gone on forever on even ground, that is, until Windu slipped up or Palpatine revealed a shatter point. Windu guided the battle across the office towards the large window, which was quickly shattered by their missed attacks. As they moved out onto the windblown edge, Sidious reallocated some of his energy from the force-powered speed he was assailing Windu with to a force grip on the ledge. The duelists then engaged in a brief flurry of blade work, but Palpatine's slight decrease in speed provided an opening allowing the Jedi Master, still utilizing the pod, to find a shatter point and end the bout with a swift kick to the Sith Lord's jaw. Sidious was thrown off balance, staggering back and dropping his weapon as he flailed for balance before retreating against the window frame. Darth Sidious appeared to be beaten and at Windu's mercy, who held his purple blade to the Sith Lord's throat. Now things get complicated when Anakin Skywalker enters the fray. Windu sensed fear emanating and thought it was the reason for Sidious's defeat, but that fear was in fact Anakin's. His fear that only the power of the beaten Sith Lord could save his wife from certain death. Having arrived so late, it also seemed to Anakin as though Palpatine, whom he saw as a father figure, was unarmed 
and defenseless. Sidious hurled a torrent of force lightning at the Jedi Master, calling once again on his Vapod mastery. Windu just barely managed to catch the lightning on his lightsaber and began deflecting it back at Sidious. The two then accused each other of being a traitor to Skywalker as he watched. The redirected current flowed through Sidious, injuring him and deforming his face hideously, though it may have been his true form all along, one shriveled by a lifetime of using the dark side of the Force. Eventually, the lightning subsided to leave Palpatine pretending to be exhausted and frail, laying on the floor. The Chancellor began begging for mercy and claimed he was too weak to continue fighting. Windu, now seeing Palpatine as too dangerous to spare, raised his blade for the killing blow. Now, we all know what happens next as Anakin seals his fate. No! But with how quickly Sidious snaps back into unleashing Force Lightning, it's safe to say he could have kept this fight going a lot longer. The Sith Lord had several more lightsabers stashed throughout his office and still had a lot of fight left in him. But ultimately, Mace did have him beat fair and square and needed only to bring his blade forward by a few more inches to finish Palpatine off once and for all. Come join us to chat more at our community Discord server linked in the description. If you enjoyed today's Star Wars video, we've got more on the screen for you right now. Also make sure to drop a like, and if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe to join the Red Squadron. Until next time, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you. Red 5, standing by.